Did you know that Susan Hayward, one of Hollywood's most celebrated actresses, once stood at the crossroads of life and death, not on a movie set, but in real life during a nuclear bomb test? This chilling and lesser-known aspect of her life raises a curtain of mystery. How did a star, known for her captivating performances and striking presence, find herself in such a harrowing situation? And what were the hidden repercussions of this incident on her life and career? A Brooklyn Beginning Susan Hayward's story starts far from the glitz of Hollywood, in the working-class neighborhood of Flatbush, Brooklyn. Born Edith the Mariner on June 30, 1917, her early life was a far cry from the red carpets and glamorous gowns she would later become synonymous with. The eldest of three children, Hayward's upbringing was modest, with her father working as a transportation worker and her mother as an actress in local stage productions. From a young age, Hayward showed a spark of the determination and resilience that would later define her career. At the age of seven, a tragic accident left her with a severely broken ankle, an injury that doctors warned might cripple her for life. However, Hayward defied these grim predictions, not only walking again but eventually developing a graceful gait that would be admired on the silver screen. Hayward's interest in acting was kindled early, undoubtedly influenced by her mother's theatrical background. She attended Girls Commercial High School, now Prospect Heights High School, where she focused on secretarial skills, a pragmatic choice considering her family's financial constraints. However, her passion for performing couldn't be quelled. She participated in school plays and soon set her sights on a career in acting, driven by a combination of raw talent and a fierce ambition to rise beyond her humble beginnings. The first significant turn in Hayward's journey came in the form of a beauty contest. At the age of 17, she entered and won a beauty contest at the Brooklyn Paramount Theater. This victory wasn't just a testament to her striking looks, it was the gateway to her future in Hollywood. The contest caught the attention of talent scouts, setting her on a path that would lead her away from Brooklyn and towards the bright lights of California. However, the road to stardom was not a straight path. Hayward faced numerous rejections in her early days in Hollywood. She struggled to find her footing in an industry that was as demanding as it was dazzling. Yet, she didn't let these initial setbacks deter her. With each audition, with every small role, she honed her craft, showcasing a blend of grit and grace that would soon captivate audiences nationwide. Susan Hayward's journey from a Brooklyn neighborhood to Hollywood's elite circles is a story of perseverance and the relentless pursuit of a dream. It's a tale that begins not with the spotlight, but with the gritty determination of a young girl who refused to let her circumstances define her future. The Breakout Role Susan Hayward's journey to stardom reached a pivotal moment with her role in the 1947 film Smash Up the Story of a Woman. This film not only showcased her exceptional acting skills, but also marked a significant transformation in her career, bringing her into the limelight as a serious Hollywood actress. Smash Up presented Hayward with a character that was complex and challenging. She portrayed Angie Evans, a talented singer who abandons her own career aspirations to support her husband's rise to fame. As her husband's career flourishes, Angie finds herself grappling with feelings of neglect and jealousy, spiraling into alcoholism. This role was a stark contrast to the more glamorous and superficial roles often assigned to actresses at the time. Hayward's portrayal of Angie's descent was both powerful and heart-wrenching, earning her widespread acclaim. Her performance in Smash Up was a masterclass in emotional depth and realism. Hayward captured the essence of a woman caught in the throes of personal turmoil, battling her demons and the societal expectations of her time. Her ability to convey the intricate emotions of her character won the hearts of audiences and critics alike, earning her the first Academy Award nomination of her career. This nomination was a milestone, solidifying her status as a leading actress in Hollywood. The film's success brought Hayward a new level of recognition and respect in the industry. She was no longer just another face in the crowd. She was now considered a formidable talent capable of carrying a film with her powerful performances. 
Smash Up opened doors to more diverse and challenging roles, allowing Hayward to showcase the breadth of her acting range in the years that followed. The role of Angie Evans in Smash Up represented more than just a career breakthrough for Hayward. It was a defining moment in her personal journey as an artist. She had fought hard to reach this point, overcoming numerous rejections and setbacks in an industry that was as demanding as it was glamorous. Her performance in the film was a testament to her resilience and dedication to her craft, qualities that would continue to define her career. Smash Up, the story of a woman, remains a significant film in Hayward's filmography, not only for its critical success, but also for the way it changed her trajectory in Hollywood. It was a turning point that marked the beginning of a new chapter for Hayward, one where she would continue to push boundaries and leave an indelible mark on the silver screen. Romance and Turbulence The personal life of Susan Hayward, much like her career, was filled with intense romances and emotional turbulence. Beyond the camera's gaze, Hayward navigated a complex world of love, heartbreak, and personal struggle that deeply influenced her both as a woman and an actress. Hayward's first marriage was to actor Jess Barker in 1944. This union, marked by its initial passion, soon turned tumultuous. The couple had twin sons, Gregory and Timothy, bringing a brief period of joy and stability. However, the marriage was strained by career pressures and personal differences. By 1954, after a decade of marriage, Hayward and Barker's relationship had deteriorated, culminating in a highly publicized and acrimonious divorce. The custody battle for their sons added to the turmoil, with Hayward eventually winning sole custody. Her divorce from Barker was not just a personal blow, but also a public spectacle, shedding light on the pressures faced by Hollywood stars in their personal lives. Despite the challenges, Hayward maintained a strong facade in public, channeling her emotional experiences into her performances. Hayward's second marriage to businessman Floyd Eaton Chalkley, known as Chalky, in 1957, marked a stark contrast to her first. Chalkley was a stabilizing force in her life, bringing a sense of peace and contentment that had eluded her in her earlier years. Their marriage was a retreat from the Hollywood scene, as the couple spent much of their time in Carrollton, Georgia, away from the limelight. This period was a happy one for Hayward, as she found solace in the quieter life they built together. However, this happiness was short-lived, as Chalkley's death in 1966 left Hayward devastated. His passing marked a turning point in her life, plunging her into a deep grief that would profoundly affect her both personally and professionally. The loss of Chalkley was not just the loss of a partner, but a pivotal moment that changed the course of her life. Hayward's personal life was as dramatic and complex as any of her film roles. Her experiences with love, marriage, and loss shaped her, leaving an indelible mark on her character and career. The dichotomy of her passionate first marriage and the tranquil stability of her second offered a glimpse into the multifaceted nature of her personality and the depth of her emotional experiences. Hollywood's Golden Age Susan Hayward's career in Hollywood's Golden Age was a testament to her versatility and tenacity as an actress. Following her breakthrough performance in Smash Up, Hayward established herself as a prominent figure in the film industry, delivering a series of powerful performances that showcased her range and depth. In the 1950s, Hayward starred in a variety of roles that highlighted her ability to tackle challenging and diverse characters. One of her notable performances during this period was in the film I'll Cry Tomorrow, 1955, where she portrayed Lillian Roth, a singer struggling with alcoholism. This role echoed her earlier performance in Smash Up and was critically acclaimed, earning her another Academy Award nomination. Hayward's portrayal of Roth was more than just a depiction of a woman battling addiction. It was a reflection of her own inner strength and ability to connect deeply with her characters. Her performances in such roles were not only technically proficient but emotionally resonant, often leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Another significant milestone in Hayward's career came with the film I Want to Live, 
1958, where she played Barbara Graham, a woman wrongfully accused of murder and facing the death penalty. Hayward's portrayal of Graham was intense and gripping, earning Hare the Academy Award for Best Actress. This achievement was a pinnacle in her career, cementing her status as one of the ERA's most talented and respected actresses. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, Hayward continued to appear in films that varied in genre and style, from romantic dramas to historical epics. Her ability to adapt to different roles and genres demonstrated her versatility as an actress. Hayward's dedication to her craft was evident in the way she immersed herself in her roles, often doing extensive research to bring authenticity to her performances. Hayward's success in Hollywood was not just a result of her talent, it was also a product of her determination and resilience in an industry known for its competitiveness and challenges. She navigated the complexities of Hollywood with a blend of grace and grit, earning the respect of her peers and the adoration of her fans. Facing Adversity Susan Hayward's journey through the heights of Hollywood stardom was not without its share of profound challenges, particularly concerning her health and the changing dynamics of the film industry. In 1955, during the filming of The Conqueror, Hayward and the rest of the cast were unknowingly exposed to radioactive fallout near the United States government's Nevada test site. This exposure had serious implications, as years later, it became evident that Hayward, along with other cast members, developed serious health issues, including cancer. Hayward's diagnosis of brain cancer in 1973 marked a significant shift in her life. The diagnosis came at a time when she was still an active and revered figure in Hollywood. Despite her illness, Hayward's commitment to her craft never wavered. She continued to act, demonstrating immense resilience and dedication. Her final film role was in The Revengers, 1972, a testament to her enduring spirit in the face of adversity. The diagnosis and subsequent battle with cancer were not the only challenges Hayward faced. The 1960s brought about a significant transformation in Hollywood, with emerging new genres and a shift in the audience's preferences. This change in the industry landscape led to a decrease in the types of roles that had made Hayward a star. As a result, she had to navigate a rapidly evolving industry that was moving away from the traditional dramas and romantic films that had defined her earlier career. Hayward's struggle with health issues coincided with these professional challenges, marking a period of adversity that tested her in various ways. Despite these obstacles, she remained a respected figure in the industry, her legacy as a talented and versatile actress undiminished. Hayward's ability to face these challenges head-on was indicative of her strong character and her unwavering passion for acting. Throughout these difficult times, Hayward maintained a degree of privacy, choosing to confront her health battles away from the public eye. This decision reflected her desire to face her struggles on her own terms, away from the glare of Hollywood's spotlight. The Comeback after facing significant health challenges and navigating the evolving landscape of Hollywood, Susan Hayward made a remarkable comeback, demonstrating her incredible resilience and passion for acting. In the early 1970s, following her diagnosis and treatment for brain cancer, Hayward took a hiatus from acting to focus on her health. This period was one of introspection and recovery for her, as she battled the illness that had come to define a significant part of her life during this time. However, her spirit and love for the art of acting remained undiminished, and she soon felt the pull of the silver screen once again. Hayward's return to acting was marked by her performance in the made-for-television movie Say Goodbye, Maggie Cole, 1972. This role was a testament to her enduring talent and determination. In the movie, Hayward portrayed a doctor grappling with the decision to leave her profession, a poignant parallel to her own life's challenges and decisions at the time. Her performance was met with critical acclaim, proving that her skills as an actress were as sharp as ever. This comeback was not just a return to acting, it was a statement of Hayward's unwavering resolve in the face of personal and professional obstacles. 
Her ability to deliver a powerful performance after such a challenging period was a source of inspiration to many and solidified her reputation as one of Hollywood's most resilient stars. The success of Say Goodbye, Maggie Cole opened up new opportunities for Hayward. She went on to appear in several more television movies and continued to receive praise for her work. These roles allowed her to explore different character types and storytelling formats, showcasing her versatility as an actress. Hayward's return to the spotlight was also a period of personal growth and change. She had faced down one of life's greatest challenges and emerged with a renewed sense of purpose and commitment to her craft. This period in her career was a reflection of her ability to adapt, to overcome, and to continue to captivate audiences with her performances. Susan Hayward's comeback in the early 1970s was a remarkable chapter in her life, highlighting her resilience and dedication. It was a period that saw her not only return to what she loved, but also triumph over the adversities that had threatened to derail her career and her life. Hayward's journey during this time was a powerful reminder of the strength and determination that characterized her both on and off the screen. Mystery and Controversy the life of Susan Hayward was not just a tapestry of cinematic achievements and personal battles. It was also woven with threads of mystery and controversy that often eluded the public eye. While she graced the silver screen with poise and elegance, her life off-screen was marked by episodes that remained largely unknown to her fans. One such episode revolved around Hayward's connection to the infamous Hollywood Blacklist era. During the 1940s and 1950s, the Red Scare swept through Hollywood, leading to the blacklisting of many artists accused of having communist ties. Hayward's name appeared on an FBI list of potential communist sympathizers, a revelation that shocked many. The details of her alleged involvement and political leanings were murky, but the mere association with the blacklist brought a shadow of suspicion over her during a tumultuous time in Hollywood history. Hayward's life was also marked by a series of lesser-known romantic entanglements and friendships that played a significant role in her personal journey. Her close relationship with actor and singer Dean Martin, for instance, was a subject of much speculation. While they shared a deep bond, the true nature of their relationship remained a subject of conjecture. This ambiguity added an element of intrigue to Hayward's persona, as fans and the media speculated about the private life of the enigmatic actress. Another controversial aspect of Hayward's life was her rumored rivalry with fellow actress Ava Gardner. While the extent of this rivalry was likely exaggerated by the press, it was reflective of the competitive atmosphere of Hollywood at the time. The narrative of conflict between two leading actresses was a staple of Hollywood gossip, adding to the mystique surrounding Hayward's career. Hayward's health struggles also gave rise to a series of controversies and rumors. Following her diagnosis with brain cancer, there was much speculation about the cause of her illness. The link between her cancer and the radioactive fallout from the Nevada test site during the filming of The Conqueror was a topic of debate and concern, raising questions about the safety measures in the film industry at the time. Despite the mysteries and controversies that surrounded her, Hayward navigated her life with a level of discretion that was uncommon in the world of Hollywood. She rarely addressed the rumors and speculation head-on, choosing instead to maintain a dignified silence. This approach only fueled the curiosity and fascination of her fans and the media, who continued to be intrigued by the enigmatic figure of Susan Hayward. Final Years as the 1970s progressed, Susan Hayward's life took a turn away from the Hollywood spotlight, marking a period of introspection and relative solitude. Following her remarkable career and her courageous battle with health issues, Hayward chose a more secluded life, stepping back from the public eye and the industry that had defined much of her existence. Hayward's final years were spent in her home in Beverly Hills and at her farm in Carrollton, Georgia, a place that had brought her much peace and happiness during her marriage to Floyd Eaton Chalkley. After his death in 1966, the farm remained a sanctuary for Hayward, a place where she could find solace and a sense of normalcy away from the glares of Hollywood. In these years, Hayward's focus shifted significantly. 
She spent her time engaging in simple pleasures and pursuits, far removed from the demands and rigors of her acting career. She found joy in the quietude of her surroundings, embracing the tranquility that her life away from Hollywood offered. However, the privacy of her final years did not entirely shield her from public attention. Hayward's fans and the media continued to show interest in her life, eager for updates on the beloved actress. Despite this, Hayward maintained a discreet and dignified presence, rarely making public appearances or statements. Hayward's health remained a concern during these years. The effects of her cancer diagnosis and treatment were ever-present, but she faced these challenges with the same resilience that had characterized her approach to earlier obstacles in her life. She managed her health privately with the support of close friends and family. Susan Hayward passed away on March 14, 1975, at the age of 57. Her death marked the end of an era in Hollywood and the conclusion of a life that had been marked by extraordinary talent, personal strength, and a level of mystique that is rare in the world of celebrity. The final part of Susan Hayward's life spent away from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood was reflective of her desire for a simpler, more grounded existence. It was a time for her to reflect, to find peace, and to live on her terms. Her retreat from the public eye was a choice that allowed her to cherish her privacy and independence in her remaining years. Hayward's life, both in its public triumphs and private retreat, remains a captivating narrative of one of Hollywood's most enduring figures. Ray Stevenson was found lifeless in a hospital in Ischia. The world was left in shock. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. A man of immense talent, gone too soon, under circumstances that left everyone puzzled. Was it a tragic accident, or was there something more sinister at play? As the news broke, whispers turned into headlines, speculating everything from foul play to secret illnesses. The man who had once captivated audiences as a Roman soldier, a Marvel anti-hero, and even a galaxy far, far away, was now at the center of a mystery that no one could quite piece together. Is this just another tragic Hollywood story? Or does the autopsy report confirm what we've feared all along? Ray Stevenson is not the first, nor will he be the last, to leave us with more questions than answers. But his story is one that demands to be told, dissected, and understood. In this video, we will journey through the life and sudden death of Ray Stevenson. From his rise to stardom, to the mysterious circumstances that led to his untimely demise. Some revelations may be unsettling, others may defy belief, but all are a part of the complex tapestry that was Ray Stevenson's life. Prepare yourself for a tale that is as compelling as it is heartbreaking. Ray Stevenson was not just an actor. He was a force of nature on screen. Whether he was wielding a sword in King Arthur, navigating the political intrigues of ancient Rome, or battling cosmic villains in the Marvel Universe, Stevenson had a presence that was impossible to ignore. But on May 21st, 2023, the world was forced to say goodbye to this incredible talent under circumstances that have left us all searching for answers. But what really happened to Ray Stevenson? How did a man in the prime of his career, with so much more to give, end up in a hospital bed in Ischia, never to wake up again? Was it a tragic accident? A medical mishap? Or is there more to the story that we're not being told? In this in-depth documentary, we will explore Stevenson's life from his early years to his rise to stardom. We'll examine the roles that defined him, the people who knew him best, and the mysterious circumstances surrounding his sudden and shocking death. So sit back and get ready as we unravel the life and enigma that was Ray Stevenson. And trust us, you'll want to stick around for what we've uncovered about his final days. It's a revelation that you won't see coming. Ray Stevenson was born George Raymond Stevenson on May 25, 1964, in Lisburn, Northern Ireland. The son of an Air Force pilot and a mother who was a local Irish woman, Stevenson's early life was a blend of cultures and experiences that would later shape his versatile acting career. The family moved to Leamington, Newcastle upon Tyne, in England when he was just eight years old, a move that would introduce him to a whole new world and set the stage for his future in the arts. 
Stevenson was a curious child, always eager to explore the world around him. His parents encouraged this curiosity, nurturing his interests in literature, history, and drama. It was during his school years that Stevenson discovered his love for acting. He participated in school plays, honing his skills and fueling his passion for the stage. But it wasn't until he attended the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School that he truly immersed himself in the craft. The Bristol Old Vic Theatre School is renowned for its rigorous training and has produced some of the finest talents in the British acting scene. Here, Stevenson underwent a transformative experience. He studied classical acting techniques, learned the nuances of stage and screen performance, and developed a deep understanding of character development. His instructors quickly noticed his natural talent and unyielding dedication, predicting a bright future for him in the industry. But Stevenson's journey wasn't without its challenges. Breaking into the acting world is no small feat, and Stevenson faced his share of setbacks and rejections. However, his resilience and determination saw him through, and soon enough, he started landing roles in local theater productions. These early roles were stepping stones, providing him with the experience and exposure he needed to climb the ladder in a highly competitive field. As Stevenson transitioned from theater to television and eventually to film, he carried with him the lessons and skills he had acquired during these formative years. His classical training gave him the ability to slip into any role effortlessly, be it a historical figure, a comic book character, or a complex anti-hero. And it was this versatility that would become one of the defining features of his career. So, how did Ray Stevenson go from a young boy in Northern Ireland to a sought-after actor, gracing our screens in epic tales of heroism and complex dramas? And what were the roles that catapulted him into the limelight, making him a household name? Stay with us, because in the next chapter, we're diving into Stevenson's rise to stardom, the roles that defined him, and the moments that made him a legend. And let me tell you, some of these roles not only changed his life, but also left an indelible mark on Hollywood history. You won't want to miss it. Rise to stardom. Ray Stevenson's journey to stardom was not an overnight success. It was a gradual climb, marked by perseverance, talent, and a bit of good fortune. After his rigorous training at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School and his early roles in local theatre, Stevenson was ready for the next big step in his career. But as any actor will tell you, breaking into television and film is a different beast altogether. The competition is fierce, the stakes are high, and the opportunities are few and far between. Stevenson's first significant break came in the form of a British drama series, where he played a supporting role. Though the series wasn't a massive hit, it gave Stevenson the exposure he needed and showcased his acting prowess to a broader audience. Casting directors took notice, and soon enough, Stevenson found himself auditioning for roles that would put him on the map. It was his portrayal of Titus Pullo in the historical drama series Rome that truly catapulted him into the limelight. The series, a co-production between HBO and the BBC, was a critical and commercial success, and Stevenson's performance was universally praised. His character, a Roman soldier navigating the complex political landscape of ancient Rome, showcased Stevenson's ability to bring depth and nuance to complex characters. The role earned him several award nominations and solidified his reputation as a formidable actor. But Rome was just the beginning. Stevenson's performance caught the eye of Hollywood producers, and soon he was crossing the Atlantic to take on roles in major motion pictures. Films like King Arthur, where he played the role of Dagonet, and Outpost, a horror film that showcased his range, followed. Each role was a stepping stone, each performance a testament to his growing skill and versatility. His Hollywood journey reached a pinnacle when he was cast in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Frank Castle, also known as The Punisher, in Punisher Warzone. The film was a commercial success, and Stevenson's portrayal of the anti-hero was met with critical acclaim. The role opened doors to other big-budget films and franchises, including his involvement in the Thor series and his voice acting in Star Wars Rebels. Stevenson's rise to stardom was not just a result of his undeniable talent. It was also a product of his work ethic, his commitment to his craft, and his ability to adapt and evolve. He was a master of his art, and his art was storytelling. 
Whether it was through the lens of history, the pages of a comic book, or the far reaches of a galaxy, Stevenson knew how to captivate an audience. So, you might be wondering, what was it like for Stevenson at the height of his career? What were the projects that he was most passionate about? And how did he navigate the complexities of fame and success? Iconic Roles and Contributions In a career spanning over three decades, Ray Stevenson took on a variety of roles that showcased his incredible range and depth as an actor. But let's zero in on some of the most iconic roles that not only defined his career, but also left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. First on the list is his role as Titus Pulo in the historical drama series Rome, which aired from 2005 to 2007. The series was a monumental undertaking, with a budget of over $100 million for its first season alone. Stevenson's portrayal of Pulo, a Roman legionary, was a standout, earning him critical acclaim and several award nominations, including a Satellite Award nomination for Best Actor in a Supporting Role in a Series in 2006. Then came his role in King Arthur, released in 2004, where he played Dagonet, a Knight of the Round Table. The film was a commercial success, grossing over $203 million worldwide. Stevenson's performance was praised for its authenticity and emotional depth, adding a layer of complexity to the Arthurian legend. But it was his role as Frank Castle, aka The Punisher, in the 2008 film Punisher Warzone that truly catapulted him into Hollywood stardom. The film, though not a blockbuster, was a commercial success, earning over $10 million at the box office. More importantly, it became a cult classic, with Stevenson's portrayal of the anti-hero being cited as one of the best in the character's cinematic history. Stevenson's versatility didn't stop there. In 2011, he joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe again, this time as Volstagg in Thor. The film was a massive hit, grossing over $449 million worldwide and solidifying Stevenson's place in one of the most successful film franchises of all time. He reprised his role in the sequels, Thor The Dark World in 2013 and Thor Ragnarok in 2017, each time bringing a unique charm and humor to the character. And let's not forget his foray into voice acting. In 2016, Stevenson lent his voice to Gar Saxon in the animated series Star Wars Rebels. The series was a hit among fans and critics alike, earning several awards and nominations, including a Saturn Award for Best Animated Series on Television. Ray Stevenson's career was a tapestry of diverse roles, each woven with the threads of his immense talent, dedication, and versatility. He was not just an actor, he was a storyteller, a performer, and an artist in the truest sense. So, what happens when a star of such magnitude is suddenly extinguished? What were the projects he was working on at the time of his tragic end? And how did the industry react to the loss of such a colossal talent? The Marvel and Star Wars Chapters In an industry where franchises often dominate the box office, Ray Stevenson's involvement in two of the biggest, Marvel and Star Wars, was a testament to his versatility and mass appeal. Let's delve into how these roles added another layer to his already illustrious career. Stevenson's first foray into the Marvel Cinematic Universe was in 2008 with Punisher Warzone, but it was his role as Volstagg in the Thor series that truly made him a part of Marvel history. The first film, Thor, released in 2011, was a commercial juggernaut grossing over $449 million worldwide. Stevenson reprised his role in the sequels, Thor The Dark World in 2013, which grossed over $644 million, and Thor Ragnarok in 2017, which raked in an astounding $854 million globally. His character, Volstagg, was a member of the Warriors Three and provided comic relief as well as emotional depth to the films. Then came Star Wars Rebels, an animated series that premiered in 2014 and ran until 2018. Stevenson joined the cast in its third season, voicing the character of Gar Saxon, a Mandalorian warrior. The series was not just a hit among the Star Wars fanbase, but also received critical acclaim, winning a Saturn Award for Best Animated Series on Television in 2018. Being a part of such massive franchises not only bolstered Stevenson's career, but also introduced him to a global audience. These roles required a different set of skills, 
Whether it was the physicality needed for Marvel characters or the nuanced voice acting for Star Wars Rebels, Stevenson delivered on all fronts. So what does it mean for an actor to be a part of such iconic franchises? And how did these roles shape Stevenson's career in ways that other roles could not? The ill-fated project in Ischia. In the weeks leading up to his sudden and tragic death, Ray Stevenson was working on a project that promised to be another feather in his already illustrious cap. The project was a film directed by Frank Chiotain, titled Casino on Ischia, and Stevenson was filming on the island of Ischia in the Gulf of Naples at the time of his demise. On May 20th, 2023, Stevenson was confined to the hospital due to an unanticipated illness while on set. According to Italian newspapers Il Corriere della Sera and Il Mattino, he died of a heart attack caused by a severe anaphylactic shock on the morning of May 22, 2023. The film in which he starred alongside Ugo Diero was in the middle of production, and Stevenson's sudden illness and subsequent death sent shockwaves through the industry. The actor was being treated at the Rizzoli Hospital of Ischia, where medical personnel discovered that his lungs were severely damaged. Despite attempts to save his life, Stevenson passed away, leaving behind his three children and his companion, the Italian archaeologist Elizabeth Caracciamet, whom he met on the set of Rome. This project was significant for several reasons. First, it was a departure from the big-budget franchises Stevenson had recently been a part of, signaling a return to more character-driven roles. Second, the film was being shot in Italy, a country that had always held a special place in Stevenson's heart, not least because of his relationship with Karachiamet. So, what does it mean when an actor of Stevenson's caliber is suddenly taken away in the midst of a promising project? How does the industry cope with such a loss, and what happens to the unfinished film? These are questions that have been haunting fans and industry insiders alike since the news broke. But the questions don't stop there. What were the exact circumstances that led to Stevenson's sudden illness and hospitalization? Was there any foul play involved, as some have speculated? Stay with us, as in the next chapter, we delve into the mysterious circumstances surrounding Stevenson's tragic end. We'll be looking at verified reports to piece together the events that led up to his sudden illness and untimely death. Trust me, you won't want to miss this. The Mysterious Circumstances In the world of entertainment, the sudden loss of a beloved figure often leaves fans and colleagues grappling for answers. For Ray Stevenson, the circumstances surrounding his untimely death are as mysterious as they are tragic. Let's delve into the verified reports to uncover what really happened. Ray Stevenson passed away on May 21st, 2023, at the age of 58. He was in Ischia, Italy, filming a project titled Casino on Ischia, directed by Frank Chotain. According to Italian newspapers Il Corriere della Sera and Il Mattino, Stevenson died of a heart attack caused by a severe anaphylactic shock. But what led to this severe medical condition? On the morning of May 22, 2023, Stevenson was found dead on the island of Ischia in the Gulf of Naples. The BBC received confirmation of his death from his advertising agency in the United States viewpoints, but no additional details regarding the circumstances or cause of death were provided. This has led to speculation and rumors, further fueled by the lack of concrete information. So, what could have caused Stevenson's sudden illness and subsequent death? Was it related to the project he was working on, or was it a culmination of other health issues that had been overlooked? These are questions that have left fans and the industry puzzled, searching for answers that may never come. The suddenness of Stevenson's illness and death has raised several questions. Why was he hospitalized just two days before his death? What were the other ailments mentioned that contributed to his declining health? And most importantly, could his death have been prevented? The medical angle, anaphylactic shock and heart attack. In the wake of Ray Stevenson's sudden and tragic death. Stevenson, who co-starred in the Thor movies, plus Punisher Warzone and RRR has died. He was- Many questions have arisen, particularly concerning the medical conditions that led to his demise. According to verified reports, Stevenson died of a heart attack caused by a severe anaphylactic shock. But what does this mean, and how did it happen? Let's delve into the medical science to understand the factors that contributed to this tragic event. Anaphylactic shock is a severe and potentially life-threatening allergic reaction that can occur rapidly. 
It can cause a range of symptoms, including difficulty breathing, a rapid drop in blood pressure, and loss of consciousness. In Stevenson's case, it was reported that his lungs were severely damaged, which is a common symptom of anaphylactic shock. This condition can be triggered by various factors such as food allergies, insect stings, or medication. A heart attack, on the other hand, occurs when the blood supply to the heart is blocked, usually by a blood clot. This can damage or destroy part of the heart muscle, leading to immediate life-threatening conditions. In severe cases like Stevenson's, a heart attack can be triggered by anaphylactic shock, which causes a rapid drop in blood pressure and extreme stress on the heart. The timeline of events leading to Stevenson's death indicates that he was hospitalized on May 20, 2023, due to an unanticipated illness. He was being treated at the Rizzoli Hospital of Ischia, where medical personnel discovered his severely damaged lungs. Despite attempts to save his life, Stevenson passed away on May 21, 2023. So, what could have triggered Stevenson's anaphylactic shock? Was it something he ate? Was it a medication he was taking? Or was it something else entirely? These are questions that remain unanswered adding another layer of mystery to his untimely death. It's also worth noting that anaphylactic shock is usually treatable if addressed promptly. The use of an EpiPen, antihistamines, and immediate medical attention can often reverse the symptoms. This leads us to another unsettling question. Could Stevenson's death have been prevented with timely medical intervention? As we grapple with these questions, it's essential to remember that the answers may not provide closure, but rather deepen the enigma surrounding Stevenson's tragic end. Stay tuned, because in the next chapter we'll explore the aftermath of Stevenson's death, including the ripple effects on his ongoing projects and the industry's reaction. The impact is far-reaching, and you'll want to know how the world is coping with the loss of such a monumental talent. The Aftermath unfinished projects and industry reactions. The sudden and tragic loss of Ray Stevenson has left a void, not just in the hearts of his fans and loved ones, but also in the entertainment industry. In this chapter, we'll discuss the ripple effects of Stevenson's death on his ongoing projects and how the industry reacted to this devastating loss. Firstly, the project Stevenson was working on at the time of his death, Casino on Ischia, was immediately put on hold. The film was in its early stages of production, and Stevenson's role was pivotal. The producers are now faced with a difficult decision. Do they recast the role, or do they shelve the project altogether? Either way, the film will forever be marked by Stevenson's absence, and its future remains uncertain. In addition to Casino on Ischia, Stevenson was also slated to appear in several other projects, including a sequel to the popular series Rome where he had gained fame for his portrayal of Titus Pulo. These projects are now left in limbo, their fates uncertain in the wake of Stevenson's untimely death. The industry's reaction to Stevenson's loss has been one of shock and sorrow. Tributes have poured in from colleagues and fans alike, expressing their grief and sharing memories of the talented actor. Notable figures like Chris Hemsworth, who worked with Stevenson in the Thor series, took to social media to express their condolences. Hemsworth wrote, Ray was not just an incredible actor, but also a wonderful human being. He will be sorely missed. Film festivals and award ceremonies have also paid tribute to Stevenson, with many dedicating moments of silence or special segments to honor his memory. The British Academy of Film and Television Arts, BAFTA, held a tribute during their annual award ceremony, acknowledging Stevenson's contributions to film and television. But perhaps the most poignant reactions have come from Stevenson's family, his three children and his companion, Italian archaeologist Elizabeth Karachimet, have expressed their grief privately, requesting the media to respect their privacy during this difficult time. Legacy and Impact Stevenson's career spanned over three decades, and in that time, he took on a variety of roles that showcased his versatility as an actor, from his early days in British television to his roles in blockbuster franchises like Thor and Star Wars, Stevenson proved time and again that he was a force to be reckoned with. His portrayal of Titus Pulo in the historical drama series Rome earned him critical acclaim and a legion of fans who admired his ability to bring depth and nuance to complex characters. This role was a turning point in his career opening doors to opportunities that would solidify his standing in the industry. 
But Stevenson's impact goes beyond his on-screen performances. Those who worked with him often speak of his professionalism, his dedication to his craft, and his ability to elevate every project he was a part of. Directors and producers have praised his work ethic, noting that he often went above and beyond to ensure the success of a project, and then there's the impact he had on his fans. Stevenson's roles often resonated with audiences, whether it was the rugged charm of Titus Pulo or the moral complexity of his character in Divergent. His performances had a way of staying with you long after the credits rolled. As we grapple with the loss of such a monumental talent, it's comforting to know that his work will continue to be celebrated and cherished for generations to come. Film festivals are already planning retrospectives of his work, and there's talk of posthumous awards to honor his contributions to the industry. In the end, Ray Stevenson's legacy is not just in the roles he played or the projects he was a part of. It's in the lives he touched, both on and off screen. And while his untimely death is a tragedy, the impact he has left is a testament to a life well lived. Ashley Judd. One moment, she's the beloved heroine of blockbuster hits. The next, she's the whistleblower in a scandal that rocked Tinseltown to its core. She's not just navigating the plot twists of her films, she's scripting a narrative where the lines between right and wrong, private and public, are as blurred as the tabloid headlines. What's at risk? Everything she's worked for and the overarching narrative of her life's most challenging roles. The Unconventional Upbringing Ashley Judd's life began in the spotlight, born in 1968 into the famed Judd family, where the stage was a second home and country music their anthem. Her mother, Naomi, and sister, Wynonna, formed the legendary country music duo The Judds. By the time Ashley was old enough to understand, the Judd name was synonymous with fame. Yet her path would diverge dramatically from country music to the silver screen. In the early 1990s, Ashley Judd began to make her mark in Hollywood. Her debut in the 1992 film Cuffs was modest, but it was her turn as Ruby Lee Gissing in Ruby in Paradise that same year that won her critical acclaim. This was Ashley stepping out of her family's shadow, earning the Independent Spirit Award for Best Lead Female. She was building a name not just as a Judd, but as Ashley, the actress. But as her star rose, so did the whispers of Hollywood. Rumors began to circulate about the pressures of growing up in a famous family, about living in the shadow of a successful music duo, and how it shaped her. The media speculated on everything, from family dynamics to the impact of fame on her personal development. These stories, true or not, became part of the public's fascination with Ashley Judd. As Ashley took on more roles, such as a stranded astronaut in Natural Born Killers, 1994, and a police officer's wife in Heat, 1995, her versatility as an actress became apparent. She wasn't just the daughter of a country music icon, she was a force in her own right. Yet, with each role, the scrutiny intensified, as did the expectations. The early years of Ashley Judd's career were a delicate balance of stepping into the limelight and stepping out of her family's shadow. The media often painted a picture of a young woman grappling with her identity, both enamored and burdened by her lineage. In Hollywood, where personal stories often fuel the fame, Ashley's background was a narrative that never ceased to captivate the audience. Hollywood and Harassment In the late 90s and early 2000s, Ashley Judd's career was in full swing with hits like Double Jeopardy, 1999, and Where the Heart Is, 2000. She was a rising star, yet behind the scenes she faced challenges that went beyond the scripts of her films. It was during this time that Judd encountered the darker side of Hollywood, a side that would later lead her to become a pioneering voice in the fight against harassment in the entertainment industry. Judd's courage became evident when she became one of the first women to speak out against Harvey Weinstein. Her 2017 revelations to the New York Times detailed an encounter from two decades prior where she experienced harassment from the mogul. This admission was a pivotal moment in the Me Too movement, sparking a wave of solidarity and confessions from women across the industry. The impact of her disclosure was profound. 
It not only shed light on the pervasive issue of sexual misconduct in Hollywood, but also highlighted the systemic barriers that had silenced so many. Judd's account was met with both support and skepticism, but her unwavering stance opened a crucial dialogue about power dynamics and the need for change within the industry. Judd's allegations against Weinstein were not without consequence. She faced personal and professional backlash, as is often the case for those who dare to speak against powerful figures. Her career suffered, with potential roles vanishing and her integrity questioned, yet she stood firm, committed to advocating for a safer, more equitable workplace for all. The controversy surrounding Judd's confrontation with Weinstein was not merely about one woman's experience. It represented a cultural watershed moment. Judd's name became synonymous with resilience and advocacy, and her actions paved the way for significant changes in how Hollywood addresses harassment and supports survivors. As her story unfolded, the public witnessed the transformation of Ashley Judd from a celebrated actress to a symbol of justice and a champion for women's rights. Her role in reshaping Hollywood's approach to harassment will be remembered as one of her most significant contributions, far beyond her on-screen legacy. In the next part of our journey through Ashley Judd's life, we will explore the specific moments that defined her as a formidable force against Hollywood's long-standing and controversial casting practices, casting couch confessions, Ashley Judd's experiences with the casting couch, a term synonymous with the expectation of sexual favors in exchange for career advancement, became a cornerstone of her narrative when she joined the chorus of voices exposing this dark Hollywood reality. Her allegations against Harvey Weinstein were not isolated incidents. They were indicative of a systemic issue that had plagued the entertainment industry for years. Throughout the 90s, Judd's roles in films such as Kiss the Girls, 1997, and Eye of the Beholder, 1999, solidified her status as a talented and versatile actress. However, the industry's covert practices meant that she, like many others, navigated a gauntlet where professional opportunities were often entwined with unsolicited advances and expectations. The public's response to Judd's revelations was a mix of shock and recognition. Her admission pulled back the curtain on an open secret within Hollywood and shone a spotlight on the individuals who perpetuated these abuses of power. The conversation around the casting couch changed from whispered anecdotes to a loud public outcry for reform. Judd's decision to speak out led to tangible change, including the institution of new policies and the founding of organizations dedicated to preventing harassment and ensuring accountability. Her role in these changes cannot be understated. By using her voice, she helped alter the landscape of Hollywood, making it a more transparent and just environment for actors. It wasn't just about the roles she lost or the personal cost of speaking out. Judd's narrative transcended her filmography as she became an emblem of courage and a beacon of hope for a more ethical industry. The actress, once known for her roles in thrillers and dramas, was now a leading figure in a real-life movement against one of Hollywood's most insidious practices. As we delve further into the life of Ashley Judd, it becomes evident that her impact reaches beyond the screen. Her next steps would take her into the realm of political and social activism, where she faced new challenges and controversies, activism and the price of speaking out. Ashley Judd's activism extended well beyond Hollywood's sound stages and onto the global stage. She has been a staunch advocate for various causes, including feminism, environmentalism, and public health. However, her foray into activism has not been without its share of controversy and backlash. Judd's involvement in political and social causes became more pronounced in the 2000s as she used her platform to speak on issues close to her heart. 
Her participation in the Women's March on Washington in 2017 was a particularly notable moment. There, she delivered a fiery performance of Nasty Woman, a poem that criticized the political climate and gender inequality. This speech drew both praise and criticism, spotlighting her as a polarizing figure in the activist community. Her advocacy work has often intersected with her personal life. Judd has been open about her struggles with mental health, discussing her depression, and the importance of destigmatizing mental health care. While her candidness has been a source of inspiration for many, it has also made her the subject of scrutiny and criticism by those who disagree with her views or question her motives. Judd has also been a vocal environmentalist, a passion that has led her to take a stand against practices like mountaintop removal mining. She has faced opposition from industry advocates and politicians who have challenged her positions, often leading to heated debates and public disputes. Despite the contention, Judd has remained steadfast in her convictions, which has sometimes come at a professional cost. Roles that might have been available to her were lost, and her outspoken nature led some in Hollywood to label her as controversial. Yet, these challenges did not deter her. Instead, they fueled her commitment to her causes. Ashley Judd's transition from actress to activist is a testament to her multifaceted nature. Her journey through the labyrinth of public opinion has been marked by victories and setbacks, but throughout, her determination to stand up for her beliefs has remained constant. In the next part of our exploration, we'll look at how Judd's activism and public life have led to personal challenges, especially within the tight-knit fabric of her famous family. Family under the spotlight. The dynamics within the Judd family have often been as newsworthy as Ashley's career and activism. With a family tree deeply rooted in the entertainment industry, the Judd's personal lives frequently became public interest. While Ashley stepped into the limelight with her acting, her relationship with her mother Naomi and sister Wynonna, also a well-known country music singer, has been subject to public fascination and speculation. Tabloids and media outlets have occasionally reported on supposed feuds within the Judd family, particularly between the sisters and their mother. The family has addressed these rumors at various times, acknowledging that, like any family, they have had their differences and periods of estrangement. However, they have also shown a united front in the face of adversity, such as during Naomi's health struggles. Ashley's role in the family dynamic has been complex. She has sometimes appeared as the outlier, the one who stepped away from the family's musical legacy to carve out her own path. This divergence has been a source of interest and, at times, portrayed as a source of tension. Yet, Ashley has also been an ardent supporter of her family, demonstrating the multifaceted nature of familial bonds in the public eye. Battling for Health, Ashley Judd's Personal Crusade Ashley Judd's personal battles, particularly with her health, have significantly shaped her public narrative. Her openness about these struggles has not only humanized her, but also cast a spotlight on the often unspoken health challenges that many face. Judd's advocacy for health issues is deeply personal, rooted in her own experiences with depression, which she has spoken about candidly in interviews and her memoir. In 2006, Judd entered a Texas treatment facility for a 47-day program to confront her depression and isolation, a brave step that she later publicized to challenge the stigma surrounding mental health. Her honesty about this journey offered comfort to those suffering in silence, providing them with a relatable figure who understood their battles. Beyond mental health, Judd has also faced physical trials. In early 2021, she suffered a harrowing accident in the Congo, where she was undertaking humanitarian work. She shattered her leg in four places and endured a grueling 55-hour rescue operation. Her ordeal and subsequent recovery were documented on social media, illustrating her resilience and determination. This incident also brought attention to the lack of medical facilities in remote areas, highlighting global health disparities. 
Judd's health advocacy extends to her humanitarian efforts abroad. She has been a global ambassador for youth aids and has worked with organizations like Population Services International, focusing on issues such as malaria prevention, reproductive health, and poverty alleviation. Her activism is not just vocal, it's actionable, taking her to the front lines of global health issues. The intersection of Jude's personal health challenges and her advocacy underscores her commitment to making a difference in the lives of others. Through her openness, she has invited a broader conversation about health and well-being, advocating for better support systems and highlighting the need for compassionate care. The Family Feud Rumors The Judd family despite their fame and successes, have not been immune to the challenges that often accompany life in the public eye. Rumors of family feuds have swirled around the Judds for years, making headlines and providing fodder for tabloids and gossip columns. The speculation has often centered on the relationships between Ashley and her mother Naomi and her sister Wynonna, touching on themes of jealousy, competition, and the pressures of fame. Ashley has spoken publicly about the complexities of her family dynamics, particularly in her 2011 memoir, All That Is Bitter and Sweet. She detailed her upbringing, marked by her mother's pursuit of a country music career and the consequent feelings of abandonment and neglect. These revelations painted a poignant picture of a family navigating the challenging terrain of reconciliation and understanding, Yet, the rumors of discord have sometimes overshadowed the family's attempts to connect and heal. The media's portrayal of the Judds has often emphasized conflict over the more nuanced reality of a family working through their issues. Ashley's estrangement from her family at various points has been heavily scrutinized, with every public appearance or absence analyzed for signs of familial strife. The Judds have, at times, presented a united front against these rumors, emphasizing their love and support for each other despite their differences. They have faced life's highs and lows together, including Naomi's battle with severe depression and Wynana's personal and professional challenges. The narrative of a family feud within the Judd clan is a reminder of the gulf that can exist between media speculation and the complex realities of family life, especially when lived in the limelight. It also underscores the strength and resilience required to address personal issues while under the watchful gaze of a public that is all too eager for the next piece of sensational news. Legal Controversies Ashley Judd's public persona has been shaped not only by her roles in film and activism, but also by legal battles that brought her into the courtroom. One of the most publicized of these was her lawsuit against Harvey Weinstein. In 2018, Judd sued Weinstein for defamation, sexual harassment, and violating California's unfair competition law, claiming he damaged her career by making false statements about her professionalism after she rejected his sexual advances. Judd's legal action against Weinstein was significant as it highlighted the often overlooked economic impact of sexual harassment. Her case emphasized that the consequences of such behavior go beyond personal violation and can have a tangible effect on a woman's career trajectory and earnings. Although parts of her lawsuit were dismissed, the case allowed defamation claims to proceed underscoring the importance of reputation and respect in the industry. Aside from her high-profile case against Weinstein, Judd has also been involved in other legal matters. In 2013, she considered a lawsuit against online trolls for harassment and threats over her political comments on Twitter. This move was a stand against the increasing problem of cyberbullying and highlighted her willingness to use legal channels to combat abuse and harassment, not only in Hollywood, but also in the digital world. Judd's legal controversies have often been framed within the broader context of her advocacy for women's rights and fair treatment. Her willingness to pursue justice through the courts reflects her commitment to holding individuals and institutions accountable. It's also indicative of the challenges women face when they confront powerful figures and systems, a recurring theme in Judd's personal narrative. 
Through her legal challenges, Judd has helped to push the conversation about women's rights and workplace harassment into the mainstream, contributing to a shift in how these issues are perceived and addressed. Social Media Scrutiny in the digital age, social media serves as a platform for celebrities to connect with fans but also subjects them to intense scrutiny, and Ashley Judd has experienced the full spectrum of this phenomenon. Her social media presence has been a conduit for advocacy and sharing personal narratives, yet it has also exposed her to criticism and invasive speculation. Judd's outspoken political views and advocacy for women's rights have often been met with support from like-minded followers. However, they have also attracted negative attention and even vitriol from detractors. She has received both praise for her courage to speak out on controversial issues and condemnation from those who disagree with her positions. One notable incident of social media backlash occurred in 2015 when Judd posted tweets about a University of Kentucky basketball game that resulted in a torrent of online abuse. Her response was to take a stand against cyberbullying, highlighting the issue of online harassment, especially towards women. Judd's experience brought attention to the often toxic discourse on social media platforms and the real-world impact of such interactions. The scrutiny on social media extends beyond Judd's activism. Her posts about her accident in the Congo, her family, and her personal life are dissected by the public and media alike. Each post becomes a statement, each silence a mystery, contributing to a narrative that she both controls and endures. Judd's use of social media underscores the complexities of a public life lived online, where every action can be amplified, interpreted, or misinterpreted by an audience of millions. This heightened visibility has made her a target for criticism, but has also provided a powerful platform to amplify the causes she champions. Environmental and Humanitarian Efforts Ashley Judd's commitment to environmental and humanitarian causes has been a defining aspect of her off-screen legacy. Her work in these areas has been both extensive and impactful, reflecting a deep commitment to social justice and ecological preservation. Judd's environmental activism has seen her take a firm stance against deforestation and unethical mining practices. She has been particularly vocal about the devastating practice of mountaintop removal mining in Appalachia, which has not only destroyed landscapes but also adversely affected the health and economies of local communities. Judd's advocacy for cleaner energy alternatives and sustainable practices demonstrates her dedication to environmental issues. On the humanitarian front, Judd's work has been far-reaching. She has traveled to global hotspots with NGOs like Population Services International, focusing on health initiatives including malaria prevention, family planning, and HIV education. Her efforts to bring attention to the issue of human trafficking have been notable, using her platform to speak out against this global crime and support survivors. Controversy has sometimes followed Judd's activism. Critics have scrutinized her for being another celebrity using their status to speak on complex issues without the perceived necessary expertise or for potentially overshadowing the voices of those directly affected by the causes she champions. Yet her dedication to these causes and her willingness to learn and speak out have earned her respect within the activist community.